I've been replaying the Resident Evil remake lately, so I was excited to see RE7 announced at this year's E3. It looks like it's going to be an even bigger departure than Resident Evil 4 was over 10 years ago, and that's very exciting. But its announcement caused me to look back at the series and question what made remakes so good to begin with. For me, it was the way Remake took advantage of mental modeling to create suspense. Mental modeling being the process in which players instinctively build up collections of what they believe to be true about a game and its systems in their heads. Remake takes advantage of mental modeling in two steps. First, the game rewards building comprehensive mental models over developing mechanical dexterity. And second, it periodically invalidates those mental models. By invalidating the very mental models players depend on, the game creates an incredibly tense experience from beginning to end. Let's break Resident Evil down to its core. Survival depends on two skills, evading enemies and fighting them. To evade an enemy, you need to be familiar enough with your surroundings to know when to squeeze past them, when to lure them into a more open area, or when to dodge the zombie's attack and escape while it stumbles. With enough practice, you could learn to evade almost every zombie in the game, but for first, second, or third time players, this probably won't be the case. Combat is sometimes an even bigger risk. The idea here is that you trade precious ammunition to avoid taking damage, but the rate of fire is so slow that you need to take the distance between you and the enemy into account as well, otherwise you end up wasting bullets and still taking damage. So the question ends up being, should you flee or should you fight? And in order to make the right decision, the player needs to constantly ask themselves several more questions. Questions like, how many bullets will I need to take down a single zombie? How much health do I have left? How much damage can they do in a single attack? All of this takes place in your head, in your mental model of the game, and it's that basic mental model that Resident Evil invalidates first. Here, let's take a look at this. I have just enough time to shoot this zombie six or seven times before it reaches me. I also know that most of the zombies up until now have taken about seven shots to kill, so my mental model tells me that combat might be a decent option here. But as I'll soon learn, that mental model is unreliable. Zombies in Remake can actually take anywhere between 5 and 9 shots to drop. Add to that some more RNG elements such as headshots and staggers, and you'll see that our mental model isn't really valid. Our fate is in the hands of random numbers thrown out by the game engine. That realization removes certainty from the equation, and uncertainty is at the core of suspense in video games. The min-maxer in all of us wants to plan out our moves carefully. We want hard numbers and predictable mechanics so that we can reliably exploit game systems. Resident Evil hides even its most basic mechanics to make that impossible. It robs us of any comfort because despite whatever perception we may have in our heads, there is very little certainty in Resident Evil. Player health is signified by four statuses, fine, yellow, orange, and red, danger. Our mental model suggests that one enemy attack will knock us down one status, from fine to yellow, and so on, but that's invalid. In reality, it works like almost any other game. Jill's max HP is 960, Chris's is 1400, and it's entirely possible for a single attack to do enough damage to drop us from fine to orange. The damage from enemy attacks, like the bite of a crimson head, is to a certain degree randomized. So you only have a vague idea of how much life you have left, and an even rougher idea of how much damage the next attack will do. Which means that, at any given time, you feel like the next zombie bite could be your last. On top of all of that, you're never given enough ammo to kill every single enemy. Deciding which zombies to kill, and which to keep alive, is a key component to success. But in order to make that decision, you need to keep the entire game map in mind. You need to consider the relationship between the room you're currently in and the rooms it connects to. Is it a hallway, is it a one-off, or is it a stairwell that a recent shortcut made obsolete? The Crimson Heads make this an even harder puzzle to solve. In Remake, when a zombie dies, it's only a matter of time before it's revived as a harder to kill, tough as nails enemy called a Crimson Head. And there are only two ways to prevent this from happening. The first is to kill the zombie with a headshot, which are mostly random or involve letting the zombie get in close enough before taking off its head with a shotgun blast. The second is to burn it. If you're playing as Jill, you can do this with the grenade launcher's flame rounds, but if that isn't an option, and most of the time it won't be, then the only reliable way to dispose of bodies is by lighting them on fire. The problem is that just like there aren't enough bullets, there isn't enough gasoline, which adds another layer of problem solving to the mix. If the zombie is in a high traffic area but easily avoided, then it might be best to just leave it alone so you don't have to worry about it turning into a crimson head 
later down the line. You end up creating a vast mental model of the entire game map, keeping track of which hallways are clear, which are to be avoided, and which have piles of bodies that are just waiting to turn. But when Resident Evil suddenly changes the state of the game map, it invalidates that mental model. Areas we thought would remain safe for travel suddenly become dangerous, shortcuts become inaccessible, and new monsters spawn in vacant hallways. These changes prevent any ironclad one-size-fits-all strategy from taking place, and instead welcome contextual, in-the-moment thinking. And contextual thinking like that is a necessity for the kind of immersion we require to generate suspense. This is another reason why I love how Remake handles the Crimson Heads. The time it takes for a zombie to transform ranges wildly. On normal, it can be as quick as 15 minutes, or as long as 80, so you can never be quite sure how long you have to dispose of a body before it turns. This changes the way you think about the game. It goes from a systemic point of view like, I have exactly 35 minutes to dispose of this body, which gives me plenty of time to refuel on the other side of the map in return, to I really hope I have more time before the zombie wakes up and kills me. Players fill in the rest of their mental model with what they perceive to be the rules of the game. The way doors work, the way enemies work, the way save rooms work. And after a while, they take this mental model as an objective truth, even though it isn't. And the Resident Evil series is at its best when it invalidates what we assumed to be steadfast rules. When save rooms are no longer safe havens. When a door leads to something unexpected. When zombies break down the barriers we thought kept them contained. What I find most interesting is how, unlike its contemporaries, Resident Evil could be recreated using pen, paper, some dice, and a game board. Think about it. Combat is so slow and methodical that it might as well be turn-based. A roll of the die can define enemy health, critical hits, and staggers, and GMs could place ink ribbons, key items, and surprise encounters around the game map. The same can't be done for Silent Hill or Fatal Frame, where so much of their suspense relies on visuals, audio, and clunky combat. It's these systems that make Resident Evil so much fun to master. They add another layer of strategy to future playthroughs, whether they be speedruns, invisible enemies, or a harder difficulty. We think we know how certain traps and mechanics work, only to be proven wrong in future playthroughs. There's this hallway, for example, famous for its jump scare. I've always assumed that the zombie dogs break through the window on your second visit. That's not true. It only happens if you enter the hallway from the north. If you enter from the west, you'll never have to deal with the zombie dogs at all. By hiding what triggers those events, we increase the likelihood of the player thinking contextually instead of strategizing, even on their second playthrough. Remake was holistic in its design, sublime in its execution, and above all, confident in making decisions that it knew would alienate some of its audience. It clearly cared deeply about its level design and its mechanics, and I think that's what the more recent games are missing more than anything else. I'm cautiously optimistic about RE7, I really am, but even if the game returns the series to some of its former glory, I don't think it will even attempt to capture the same kind of systemic depth that Remake had back in 2002. And that's all I've really got to say about Resident Evil and the art of suspense in video games. Thanks for watching. Uh, there's more to come, as always, and until next time, see you later.